The wait is over. Squad 44 just dropped one of its biggest updates yet, and it's packed with so much new content, game-changing features, and, well, some serious firepower. Whether you're a frontline fighter or an armored vehicle enthusiast, there's something here to get to grips with, and I am so happy it has arrived. I, you know, it's taken me quite some time to actually fall in love with Squad 44, the same way that I did with Hell Let Loose. That's a game that I've been playing since its early access, and I've absolutely adored it. But Squad 44 took me a little bit longer to get to grips with, mostly because, yeah, it's a little bit more hardcore. Trying to actually jump into games takes a little bit more time, and whilst the player base is still not quite where it should be, it's often frustrating. But getting a good game is something and an experience that Hell Let Loose really doesn't give you. That all-out massive warfare in this massive simulation is terrifying, beautiful, and, well... I was about to say thought-provoking. The only thoughts it provoked me were thoughts of PTSD. First up, though, we're talking about the new scale. With the newest update that's just released, Squad 44 now supports 100-player servers, thanks to some serious Unreal Engine for replication optimization. They actually borrowed all of this stuff from their other game, Squad, which is one of the first things that we've seen come from the new acquisition. When Offworld Industries decided to buy Squad 44 and relaunch it, in well their new franchise it would be interesting to see what experience that they could bring over from their behemoth game and that is squad and well the 100 player battles is just one of them the replication and optimization from unreal engine 4 means that we can expect smoother performance even in 100 player servers and the heat of battle as well it is an absolute game changer now on par with how let loose in terms of its scale but of course it brings over all the realism from squad 44's base and i love the fact that they're using their other games in order to bolster up this one that's not it though it's not just the 100 players that is going to be completely changing the games and the maps themselves the frontline mode is something that i mentioned in a previous developer blog and that's finally come out it's now been rolled out across more than 18 maps you can engage in strategic objective-based combat across 20 maps altogether. Whether you're storming Normandy or holding the lines of the dense forest of the Ardennes, the frontline mode adds a whole new layer of tactic. I've been playing a lot of Carantan. St. Mo and Gleas has also had a bit of an overhaul as well. We'll get onto that in a little bit. But this frontline game mode is kind of what you'd expect with Hell Let Loose. So as someone that's come from that, it definitely feels like it. I can fit in a little bit more with this game mode. I think Frontline is probably going to be one of the more popular ones, hence why, well, it's been one of the most hyped in the update. But it'll be interesting to see how it weighs up against things like Offensive, so on and so forth. Just because it kind of tends to flatten out seeing the player base where they go for. Certain maps stick in rotation more than others, and certain game modes will do the same. And whether Frontline will stay up there, well, I guess time will tell, and that's still to be seen. But it looks like it's been pretty successful so far. They've introduced new objectives like searching for and recovering secret documents or taking out enemy weapon caches and vehicles. This variety keeps every match fresh and forces you to adapt your strategy on the fly. Tanks are rolling out in full force with the Reign of Steel update. The armored game mode just got a really big upgrade, adding in the Cromwell Mark VI close tank support with its 95mm howitzer and the AEC Mark III armored car, equipped with the 75mm gun. So whether you're a tanker or just facing off against them, these new vehicles will be on the battlefield themselves. And in fact, they're bringing in these tanks from the Reign of Steel update to the armored mode, which is basically tank only. Um, I've not actually had a chance to play that yet, but it sounds absolutely incredible and it looks, well, incredibly terrifying. They've also redefined armor piercing mechanics making spalling more realistic and emphasizing the importance of precise shots. Whether you're using armor piercing or APCR or heat rounds, each has its own distinct advantages and challenges. They've updated the handling and performance tweaks across various vehicles and making it so much more realistic. And in general, the armor battles are so much more engaging. In fact, just seeing it from the ground and seeing how these tanks work now, it is some of the most realistic armor I've ever seen in a game. And I'm so, so, so glad that they've been able to put it into Squad 44 in this kind of way. As someone that plays a lot of armor squad in Hell Let Loose, it'll be interesting to see how that differs. And I think, well, like everything, it's going to be a little bit more realistic and a little bit more intense to try it out. But the reward being so much more. Now, well, let's go back to talking about on foot because this is what most people are going to be playing. And of course, there has been an overhaul to the mines and explosives. 
they have been changed to reflect their real life counterparts. You've got the notorious bouncing Betty, which yes, I think was that in Cod World at War? I think that was in Cod World at War. Essentially, when you run past it, it bounces up in the air to get a good shot on your mid region and then detonates, putting fragmentation into your testicles. It adds this heart-stopping delay that will keep you on edge, and all mines now are placed individually. You can apply more of them and make your traps even more deadlier. Not just this, but there are also hand grenades that have been tweaked for authenticity. Of course, they've always been in the game, but the German stick grenade now has a wider blast radius, but a higher damage falloff compared to the American Mark II pineapple grenade, you know, your general frag grenade. And those who love grenade launchers, remember that American and British rifle grenades now have a timed fuse, adding a new layer of strategy to your explosive arsenal. Now, having these smaller overhauls are really great for keeping things interesting, but what it will do is completely change the way people that specialize in things like explosives play because they're going to have to change their tactics in order to kind of counteract the changes. Having things like more timed fall-offs and bigger areas of damage means that actually using these things are going to have to be adapted now let's talk a little bit about my favorite and the biggest change within the game and this well this is the graphics overhaul i mean the squad 44 and postscripts that came before it always had a good place in the community and i always knew that it was a solid title but i really struggled with it mostly because it just felt clunky and more importantly actually visualizing people on the battlefield and actually getting into games and being able to have a good game was so much trickier than a more arcadey approach like hell let loose and a lot of this was just down to the look but now well chapter three has had a huge graphics overhaul bringing in saint mary and gleason carantan close to their historical reality with more detailed building models refined environments and even furniture in open buildings to give these maps more of a real life feel this really does change the emergence and running around Carantan quite a lot. You can pretty much go in every building and all of them have bits of, well, scenery and objects that you can hide behind, shooting out windows. It's very, very satisfying. And all in all, it just looks so much better now. I don't know. It feels like there's a fresh lick of paint, even though a lot of the changes haven't just been graphics and the graphics overhaul is minimal on the surface, but really it feels so much smoother. And this game seems to run really, really well now. Now, one thing I will say during this gameplay is some of it will be captured on a US server just because of the time I was playing and hence why there was a tiny bit of lag on some people but i had no issues on eu servers of lag. it was just hopping onto a us server every now and then there'll be a little bit rubber banding but that was really about it but generally this is probably one of the most game-changing updates for squad 44 mostly because of that new 100 player servers of course the front line adding in and well the graphics overhaul i think what this does is take squad 44 up to the real levels of well hell let loose and bringing it back into the limelight and also showing that these guys they're committing to making this work and it seems like they're not changing that anytime soon there was a real commitment to actually changing the game for the better and trying to bring more players in despite the fact it's had a rocky well few years in fact if we have a look at the steam charts we can see the effect that this is having when the new announcements were made of squad 44 coming back we reached of course over a thousand concurrent players then throughout june we stuck around six five six hundred and now as mentioned in my previous video i said we're probably going to settle around 700 concurrent players on a 24-hour peak well i was actually kind of wrong we're above that <laughs> We're getting around 1100 at this point in time, which means there is such a healthy player base. And I think with each update that comes in, it's just going to rise and rise and rise. And if we have a look at the one year graph here, we can see exactly how that is working. We can see exactly how it's improving and how we're heading back up. And we've got an uphill trajectory. So there's only good things really coming for Squad 44. I think if you haven't picked it up now, this is the time to do it. I, I think it's actually well worth the money right now. Maybe if you're a Howl at Loose fan, if you find much worth playing both the games, they do have a lot of similarities. However, I think Squad 44 is getting to the place where it has actual more content and more details that Howl at Loose. It just needs to slightly refine its combat and then it's probably going to be around a similar level. However, I'd love to know what you think. So please leave your comments down below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for more updates on Squad 44. And until then, I will see you in the next one.